Gem International is a new diamond explorer in the richest diamond producing country in Africa. Located next to the fourth largest producing diamond mine in the world. International Spotlight is on an 1109 carat diamond recently discovered in Africa by a fellow Canadian junior with a proven operator and finance team. Gem International trades on the TSX Venture Exchange. Symbol GI. Visit us at gemdiamondmining.com. Welcome to the Goddard Report. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Michael Rivero, founder and editor of WhatReallyHappened.com. Welcome back to the show, Michael. Thank you for having me. And Michael, congratulations for calling the Trump win when somehow the mainstream media missed it. Why did they miss it and how did you get it? Well, uh, it was a, a case of the corporate media wasn't trying to measure public opinion. They were trying to manufacture it uh, by going on out and saying, all your friends and neighbors are voting for Hillary Clinton. Don't you want to vote for Hillary Clinton, too? And they were relying on the herd instinct to draw people forward. And it's a very, very old propaganda trick going back to the 1950s and 1960s, but it doesn't really work anymore in the age of the Internet and the independent media. So uh, the, the, the reality is the internal polls were showing uh, much more accurate representations of what was going on. Certainly the polls that were not connected to any corporate media outlet had a more accurate reflection of what was going on. And uh, even though there was massive, massive... Um, uh, uh, election fraud going on all across the country. They couldn't overwhelm a landslide. Nigel Farage is comparing Donald Trump's victory uh, to the Brexit vote, which overcame massive election fraud there as well to pass. So uh, uh, we're, we're seeing all the pollsters uh, trying to recover their credibility and, and say, well, even though we blew it this this badly this time you can count on us next time to tell you what's going on because you know we're refining our models and the rest of it but it, it, it was all an attempt to manufacture a, a point of view rather than actually measure the public sentiment and uh, uh, so in the end it was a massive groundswell of American uh, voters I think it was the, the biggest voter turnout in something like 23 years I was getting calls into my show where, where people were saying people on crutches and wheelchairs were going into the polling places to vote for Donald Trump, uh, and it was just this incredible grassroots movement uh, that overthrew the oligarchy and brought down Hillary Clinton, uh, and Donald Trump is now on his way to being the 45th president of the United States of America, assuming he's not shot dead somewhere between now and then. What happens to the mainstream media? Because critics have told me they're the biggest losers here. They absolutely are. They they uh, were, were openly showing their bias to Hillary Clinton, uh, which would have been forgiven had she won. Uh, but now the American people are, are seeing that the corporate media is not objective. They are not biased. They're not reporting the facts in a fair and balanced way. Uh, and even before this debacle, public trust in the corporate media was down to like 6% of the American population. I'm sure it's going to be worse now. Uh, certainly, we're going to start seeing uh, the corporations that are backing these co media outlets uh, start to demand budgets be cut, and I'm sure a lot of these uh, prostitutes and correspondents in the corporate media are now all of a sudden realizing uh, they're going to be uh, ha having to learn how to live without those million-dollar paychecks. Uh, I would expect that the 65 media personnel uh, who went to that secret, private, off-the-record dinner with John Podesta to coordinate with Hillary's campaign are probably going to find themselves pink slipped because the corporate media is now thrashing about how do they regain the trust of the American people and the first thing they're going to have to do is jettison everybody who was compromised by the Clinton campaign and so I, I think this is probably the reason you saw so many tears and so many eyes last night when uh, Trump's victory was finally announced I mean MSNBC uh, waited until the middle of Trump's acceptance speech to finally come on out and say, oh, yeah, Trump won this thing. The BBC anchor was so frustrated, he kept yelling, why doesn't the America, um, the American networks call this election? It's obvious to anyone. They, they had an elections expert say 
there's no way Hillary can win if even through any miracle she takes the next six states, she still can't win. BBC, uh, in other words, was calling him a winner long before the U.S. networks did. Yeah, I noticed that. Uh, the foreign media was calling it for Donald Trump, but uh, the American media was still hoping for some kind of a, a last-minute save, some kind of a miracle, a come-from-behind, uh, and it just wasn't going to happen. And uh, obviously they didn't want to uh, report that Donald Trump had won because they were basically having to admit to the American people that they had been completely wrong all along. And uh, I, I think we're, we're going to see an acceleration of the transition uh, from dominance by the corporate media uh, to the rise of the independent media, such as uh, you and I and my website and so forth. You said there was voter fraud. What happened and can it be eliminated by the next election? Well, that is certainly going to be uh, my goal in doing that. Now, back in 2000 in Florida, when they had this completely out of control election with the dangling chads, uh, George W. Bush went into office promising there was going to be reform. But you have to remember, George W. Bush won the office through that election fraud. Uh, and so he didn't want the system to be changed because he wanted to win re-election. Uh, this time, we have the candidate who was being cheated against is now going to be the president, and I think he's going to have the desire and the will uh, to do something about this election uh, problem. And it is possible to have a very simple, reliable, trustworthy, open election system. I've designed the outline for one myself. We just need to get rid of all these computers. We need to get rid of tabulation centers. And we need to just have a perfectly open, transparent counting system at the precinct level and all of the totals published and all of the math work shown all the way up to the national level. Uh, it's like when you're in school, when you come up with the answer and the teacher says you've got to show your work. That's all we're saying they need to do. And uh, obviously we need to enforce the voter ID laws so that only U.S. citizens can vote and only vote once. Uh, and, and, and just really rein this system in. Because if there's one thing coming out of this election, the American people have come to understand our election system is crooked. It's designed for fraud. It's designed to facilitate theft of elections. And fortunately, enough Americans stood up in defiance of those rigged elections uh, to put Donald Trump into the Oval Office. Was there any post-election violence? Yes, there was. Uh, a lot of Hillary Clinton uh, supporters, mostly the illegal immigrants, were rioting uh, in California, Washington State, and Oregon, uh, burning cars, burning American flags. And basically, these illegal immigrants are feeling like they were cheated. Uh, they were promised that if they could get across the border into the United States, uh, and uh, register to vote, which is illegal, vote for Hillary Clinton, which is illegal, vote for her many times, which is even more illegal, that they would be given amnesty and an eventual green card, and now that's not going to happen. Uh, and that's uh, a part of a much larger reality that Hillary Clinton is now having to deal with. Everybody who supported her candidacy in terms of committing illegal acts did so on the sure and certain belief that Hillary Clinton as president would be able to protect them from prosecution. Well, that's not going to happen anymore. Hillary Clinton is not going to be the president, and Donald Trump is uh, going to be putting probably uh, Trey Gowdy as the attorney general, and they're going to be going after some of these people for the crimes they've committed. Now, everyone's always joking about all these celebrities who said they're going to uh, move to Canada, you know, because Trump won. And, of course, Canada is already saying, no, you're not allowed in because if you were stupid enough to vote for Hillary, you're too stupid to live in Canada. But I would not be surprised if we start seeing some of our uh, political hacks uh, uh, hit the borders heading for countries without extradition. Well, the Canadian immigration website crashed. There were so many inquiries uh, made to it, although uh, one of my insiders tells me it crashes on a regular basis because it's a piece of crap. <laughs> well, they must have been written by the same people who did Obamacare. What is going to be done now to unite America? Well, Donald Trump, uh, of course, did a very presidential acceptance speech and said, we're all going to work together now. Uh, certainly with the campaign over, the forces that were dividing us along racial and gender lines uh, are going to go away because it is a hallmark of American elections that leading up to the elections, uh, there will be uh, attempts to split the population against each other along these various lines, race, age, gender, orientation, in order to control and exploit them for uh, votes. 
Uh, they'll, they'll go to the gays and say, oh, the straights hate you and they want to burn you, and if you vote for me, I'll protect you from the straight people. Well, that's all going to go away. George Soros is putting away his checkbook, and so the Black Lives Matter movement is now going to fade away, uh, and people are just going to go back uh, to uh, living and working together. Uh, but we're going to have to basically reach on out to each other and say, we were all the victims of a series of unending frauds and swindles uh, to control us and trick us out of our money and our votes. And Americans are now willing to listen to that uh, because they've seen with their own eyes just how crooked the uh, political election system is. In fact, uh, the demographics are showing that Hillary Clinton, even though she was relying on the black Hispanic and women vote to put her over. She didn't connect with any of those groups. A lot of women voted for Trump. Uh, a lot of uh, the legal Hispanic citizens voted for Trump because they see the illegal immigrants as a uh, competitor for available jobs and resources. And I, I think one of the leaders of Black Lives Matter actually put it best when he said, Hillary Clinton is saying exactly the things we want to hear, and we have absolutely no way of knowing that she'll ever keep her word about any of it. That trustworthiness issue really came back to haunt her big time. Now, Hillary's big mistakes in terms of the strategy of the election itself, she assumed she had Florida because of all the election fraud down there. But because people were aware of election fraud, they were more willing to point it out. They were more willing to complain. You had more election workers who were willing to take machines out of service for flipping votes from Hillary to Donald Trump and going to paper ballots. Uh, and then Hillary assumed she had Michigan and Wisconsin, which are traditional blue states, but flipped for Donald Trump this time. And between those three, that was basically uh, the end of the issue, and, and Hillary was finished from that point on. Will the investigations continue into Hillary and her emails and into the Clinton Foundation? Uh, I certainly assume so. The only thing that could possibly stop them is if Barack Obama issues a blanket presidential pardon for all of the Clintons and all of their people and all of the staff over at the Clinton Foundation, which would be a black stain on his historical legacy, which really doesn't have a whole heck of a lot of anything positive to go on there anyway between Obamacare and all these wars and global warming. Uh, and technically, a president is not supposed to be able to issue a pardon until after somebody is charged and convicted of a crime. But unfortunately, Gerald Ford set a very bad precedent when he took office following Richard Nixon's resignation. Uh, Gerald Ford issued this blanket pardon for all participants, for all crimes uh, known and unknown, uh, to end our national nightmare. And the real reason he did that was because the investigation into Watergate had come dangerously close to uncovering the link between the motive for the Watergate burglary and the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. And so Ford wanted to shut all of that down, and he issued this blanket pardon. Nobody challenged him on it because nobody wanted that information to be made available to the American people. And Obama may cite the Ford precedent and try and write a blanket pardon for everybody. Uh, but uh, again, that's not going to go over very well with the American people, who are expecting Donald Trump to keep his promise of prosecutions of these criminals. Well, even if you're pardoned and didn't face any jail time, for example, in Canada we have public hearings where people who testify, first of all, can't be held uh, criminally liable for any testimony they give because they want to get to the truth. Could you have a reconciliation and truth hearing to find out what really happened? Well, I would like to see that happen, and we do have a system down here in the United States of America called an immunity deal. And the immunity de de deal came about because we have something in our Bill of Rights called the Fifth Amendment, which says you cannot be compelled to provide testimony that will uh, incriminate yourself. Uh, and the idea of an immunity deal is we are saying you cannot be prosecuted for anything that you say, therefore you cannot invoke your Fifth Amendment rights. Now, that one's taken a bruising lately because one of Hillary's IT experts, Brian Pagliano, got an immunity deal and still insisted on invoking the Fifth Amendment uh, during his testimony before Trey Gowdy. Which, you, uh, you know, tells, there's a cover-up there. There's definitely a cover-up. So uh, we could have a Truth and Reconciliation uh, 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 Commission, but if I am correct, and Hillary Clinton was repeating the 1996 Chinagate scandal, selling U.S. secrets to foreign interests using her weak email server uh, to deliver the goods and her charitable foundation to collect and launder the money. That's a secret nobody in Washington, D.C. ever wants to come on out because the, the very image of a serving Secretary of State selling out her country for money 
uh, is a scandal that could delegitimize the entire government. And right now, our entire government's legitimacy is already hanging by a thread. We'll have more with Michael Rivero right after the break. I'm Larry Ray, President and CEO of American Manganese, Inc., listed on the TSX Venture, ticker symbol AMY, A-M-Y, with proprietary patents in the U.S., China, and South Africa. Our focus is on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. China recently legislated the responsibility for recycling onto their electric vehicle manufacturers and importers. For more information, please visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. In Goddard, we trust. Welcome back. We're speaking with Michael Rivero. Michael, is it good for the U.S. and good for the world that you have a united White House, House of Representatives, and Senate, all with a majority of Republicans? Well, it's certainly going to make it a lot easier for Donald Trump uh, to get certain legislation through. Uh, but at the same time, in terms of Donald Trump affecting any change to the status quo, uh, the issue isn't whether Congress is Democrat or Republican. It's how many of them uh, represent the old guard who want to preserve the status quo the way it is. A lot of those members of Congress uh, won their seats through election fraud. They're not going to want to see the election system changed. Uh, a lot of them have gotten very rich uh, through uh, loopholes that allow members of Congress to in, uh, do insider trading based on information that they know from their jobs. They're not going to want that to stop. Uh, and a lot of these uh, members of Congress are still more loyal to Israel than to the U.S. Uh, they're going to be uh, putting pressure on Trump as well, which is why I'm telling my readers and my radio audience uh, that Donald Trump's victory yesterday is not the end of our struggle. It's the very beginning, because Donald Trump cannot change our nation for the better all by himself. He's up against an institutionalized oligarchical structure uh, that doesn't want anything to change at all. And we, the American people, are going to have to stand shoulder to shoulder with President Trump, 300 million strong, glaring through the windows of those office buildings that our senators and representatives and reminding them they're supposed to work for us. They're supposed to represent us. They're not there to represent Wall Street. They're not there to represent Big Pharma. They're not there to represent Big Oil. They're not there to represent Israel. And if they do not do the job they are supposed to be doing, then we will do to them in two years what we did to Hillary Clinton yesterday. Will the director of the FBI be fired? Uh, certainly when Trump takes office, he'll be gone. So will Loretta Lynch. We're actually hearing rumblings that Obama might fire uh, uh, James Comey uh, almost immediately. Uh, because of that huge embarrassment involving the reopened FBI investigation. But Comey's hand was actually forced, uh, because, uh, both because of the New York Police Department planning their own press conference and because Judicial Watch filed a Freedom of Information Act lawsuit for all of the paperwork in the FBI's investigation into Hillary Clinton's email server. And the way the law works is once the FBI closes an investigation, that paperwork becomes available to the Freedom of Information Act. And so the only way that Comey could keep those documents out of Judicial Watch's hands was to reopen the case. Will Julian Assange and Edward Snowden become heroes in the U.S.? Well, they already are, and I think it's time to arrange pardons or, uh, uh, in, in the case of Assange, uh, grant asylum within the U.S. Uh, it, it's time to bring them home. Who do you think will be in the Trump cabinet? Well, it's kind of hard to say right now. A lot of suggestions are being put forward. A lot of people are concerned that he may have too many of the old guard neocons in there. I'd like to see Ron Paul uh, uh, in his cabinet, possibly even as Secretary of the Treasury. Uh, uh, and and uh, certainly I'm hoping that he's going to have Trey Gowdy as Attorney General. Uh, but uh, everybody's talking. Everybody is making guesses. And, of course, a lot of people are trying to make nice-nice with the new Trump administration and angle for some of those jobs. Uh, but we'll see what's going to happen. One thing to keep in mind, though, Donald Trump is not going to go along with this idea that his image requires him to keep a cabinet member who's making bad choices. Uh, Donald Trump's public image is right out of his TV show, The Apprentice, of firing anybody who's not performing correctly. And I, I suspect he'll carry that right into the White House. 
and uh, do that to the cabinet. Personally, I don't think anybody accepting a position in the Trump administration should assume they have any job security at all if they are not living up to President Trump's expectations. Putin in Russia appears to be quite happy with the Trump win. There are, of course, rumors that his Secret Service was uh, sending uh, secret messages out to try to promote Trump. Any truth to that, and why would Putin be happy? Well, uh, there's no truth to it whatsoever. Uh, Putin is just the excuse for people who are losing elections. In fact, even Angela Merkel is now out there saying, as she goes into an election that she's likely to lose, oh, Putin is rigging our elections, he's interfering with them, he's hacking in there. And it's utter nonsense to say that Putin was hacking the American elections because every detected instance of vote fraud favored Hillary Clinton, not Donald Trump. Now, Putin is very glad that Trump uh, got elected because Putin does not want to go to war with the United States any more than we, the American people, want to go to war with Russia. In fact, Putin has already sent a message uh, to uh, President-elect Trump saying we're ready to go back to being friends. Down in the Philippines, President Duterte, who was pivoting to China over Obama's interference in the Philippines' handling of drug criminals, is already saying to Trump, we're ready to go back to being friends with the United States of America. So already we're, we're seeing uh, foreign policy uh, impacts uh, of Trump's uh, election, even though Trump himself can't actually execute foreign policy just yet until he's inaugurated. Uh, but Putin is already saying, yeah, we're going to go back to being friends. And that means that Putin is, in all probability, not going to respond to any deliberate provocations toward war that the U.S. may try and uh, carry out between now and Donald Trump's inauguration. Uh, because certainly those who want war uh, are now looking at, they, they even have to start it before the end of the year or they're not going to get it. A hundred million Americans voted. What about the ones who didn't bother to vote? Well, shame on them. Uh, for not getting on out. Of course, you need to remember that of that 300 million Americans, uh, some are legally too young to vote. Uh, others are simply too old to get out of their homes, although apparently, uh, again, we, we heard stories of people on crutches and wheelchairs getting in uh, to do the vote. Uh, the problem with only 100 million Americans voting, and it was still a high turnout uh, uh, for, for one of these elections, uh, is it, it allows the illegal immigrant voters a greater sway uh, because the fewer legal citizens are voting, then the more weight an illegal vote carries. And it, it is a real problem. Now, I don't think we should have mandatory voting, uh, because I don't think anybody should vote who hasn't actually put some thought into that decision. And it may be that a lot of, of Americans stayed home and didn't vote simply because they, uh, uh, they just weren't really sure what the issues were anymore. Will Trump fire Janet Yellen as head of the Fed? That's already being talked about. Wall Street's already talking about the ramifications should that happen. The real question we're starting to hear uh, in the back channels is, would Donald Trump go forward with an actual full audit of the Federal Reserve, which the Federal Reserve absolutely does not want to see happen? Would that prove that the U.S. really doesn't have any gold? Uh, well, remember the Federal Reserve, uh, that's all about the national debt and how much wealth uh, the owners of the Federal Reserve have extracted from the American people over the last hundred years. Uh, in terms of how much gold the United States has, that would be an audit of Fort Knox, which has not happened in over half a century. Uh, and, of, of course, the other issue is how much gold is really in the New York Federal Reserve vaults that supposedly belongs to other people. Is that really still there? And that's an open issue. And uh, uh, it would be nice to see these issues resolved, uh, if a way can be done, uh, uh, found to do them that doesn't actually trigger a gold run, which well might. Uh, gold prices spiked on Trump's election, and we may actually see some of these people holding these paper gold contracts try and cash them on in, and that could lead to a gold run and the revelation that there isn't as much gold in the New York Federal Reserve or J.P. Morgan or Fort Knox as we've all been told there is. Will Donald Trump favor the U.K. over the E.U.? Well, certainly the EU is concerned that he well might. They're already sending a delegation uh, to try and open negotiations for the future President Trump to be doing business directly with the EU and bypassing Great Britain. But as to what uh, Donald Trump may do, uh, he's very good friends with Nigel Farage, and uh, certainly Trump sees the parallels between his overcoming massive election fraud to become president and the Brexit votes overcoming massive election fraud uh, to lead to the independence of Great Britain. And certainly Donald Trump is not on board 
with the globalist agenda, the New World Order agenda, and even Brussels is in a panic right now because it was bad enough when they had Russia and China that didn't want to be part of the global New World Order. Now you've got the United States is most assuredly moving away from that as well. Wasn't the global New Order basically the world's billionaires ganging up on the rest of the planet? Yeah, it really was just that. Uh, this idea that they wanted to have a one-world government and a single golden throne of planet Earth, uh, with all of them dreaming that the seat would be polished by their own particular derriere. Uh, and uh, uh, I think Soros, especially this last election, uh, has sort of awakened people to the reality that individuals with way too much money are capable of a great deal of mischief, and they seem to have this idea that having that much money somehow confers on them a divine right to treat the planet and all of the human race like there's some kind of toy or plaything. And we've certainly seen that with Bill Gates and his vaccine talk and depopulation agenda. And these are people who are trying to control the world who have not been elected to that authority. What's your final message, Michael? You were the one who told us maybe we should listen to independent voices. Well, I, I think the independent voices have been vindicated as of yesterday. Uh, and uh, again, we're going to continue to be independent here in the United States, at least for the next four years, uh, and we're going to do as much good with that as we can. Any fears that the new administration would be anti-free press? Uh, none whatsoever. I, I think the new administration is going to be anti-media monopoly uh, because of the way these large media corporations treated Donald Trump. I think he's going to be naturally biased towards the independent media. Michael, thank you so much for being a special guest. Thank you. My guest has been Michael Rivero, founder and editor of WhatReallyHappened.com. You're listening to the Goddard Report on TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Find us on Twitter at TalkDigitalNet. On YouTube, we're Talk Digital Network. Questions for the show can be emailed to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on the Goddard Report and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. The Goddard Report is available online and mobile at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. The Goddard Report is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.